Okay. Today I'm gonna talk about uh, reactive programming, cyclic graphs, and floating point numbers. These things. Uh, I mean, if you if you're doing reactive programming, and you have cyclic graphs, you you need some way to escape the cycle, and. Uh, this is usually no problem. I mean, there's no point in reacting to a change which turns out to be based on a value you've already seen. Uh, so you just compare uh, your current value to the incoming value, and if they are equal, then you don't, uh, let's say, continue reacting but floating point numbers are always tricky um, I can show I, I just created a toy to play around with this I can show this uh, first okay so I have this uh, Bitcoin calculator or whatever here um, and um, yeah two Bitcoin equals you can pretty much see what's going on here. It's pretty basic math, and um, and uh, but yeah, computers aren't very clever when it comes to floating point numbers. Uh, let me just demonstrate directly here. So if I say four point actually I have to reload this now to four point one two three it'll trigger an exception because yeah this exception says uh, possible infinite 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 recursion after ten iterations yeah so but and uh, this happens, I uh, try to draw some graphs here, this happens because, uh, let's see, I mean all of these, all of these are linked together in a reactive network with one model at the back end, uh, that I call this the Satoshi model, <coughs> uh, and the circular scenario here is uh, as you can see uh, if you input a BTC this one it'll go down here and if you parse it here from text into a floating point or double point number um, which is no problem uh, then it will do some calculations using this floating point number here in between these two that's when things turn slightly inaccurate and it will actually feed it back to itself which will trigger a new change because there's some inaccuracies here and so on and so on it has to feed back this way because if the user enters a satoshi input like one satoshi it will have to update the other way too so it, it goes in but the same problem perhaps not in the satoshi context because this is actually an integer but the same problem happens in other contexts here floating point input contexts um, <laughs> and it actually uh, yeah it can, it's Pretty, it, it can get messy pretty fast. Uh, I can show uh, just here. You can see uh, if you imagine some input being 23. This is the input, and it is to calculate something based on that. I mean, for a human, this is no problem, but for a computer, this is impossible. You see, the result isn't accurate. And if I keep going, 
using this result in further calculations. It will keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse over time. More and more messy. And it'll never stop. It'll all uh, it'll go on and go always change. Uh, that so yeah, that's why it ends up in an infinite loop and uh, you get a stack a stack overflow error uh, actually. But yeah, I tried to pick it up before that. So uh, more user friendly exception. Okay, but anyway this, the solution to this is very simple. Instead of doing calculations on floating point numbers, you convert them into rationals, which is very easy in closure. You see that? That's basically two integers now. There's no floating point number here. So the computer can calculate things with 100% accuracy when, uh, when we're using ra ratios like this you see this is accurate this is not accurate and it accumulates over time it's like noise I mean if you can imagine an electronic circuit with a feedback loop here there's some noise over here which will will go lead to uh, over here I mean which will lead to be picked up in the feedback loop and so on and so on and so on not only here but across each of these two so it's pretty cha chaotic it, it, uh, it, uh, it turns into a kind of storm uh, if I let it run uh, on its own so yeah I, I just want to show you guys this because it's maybe it's pretty basic but it's pretty I mean if it's, uh, it's pretty interesting uh, let me just show you that again 4.123 boom it, it, it'll, it'll crash but if I flip this to false this flag here it will use the it convert a double floating point into a ratio, so it'll work. To refresh the page, four point one two three, perfect. See, you can add us there. Yeah, this is a pretty short video. This is just something I'm playing around with today. To yeah, it's. Uh, Okay, I, th I think that's it. Just, uh, I will link to the source code for this little toy in the in the video description below, so you guys can find it. I've tried to resize the font I'm using now, so maybe you can read some of it now already. This is all pretty darn simple. I can actually show you guys. Let's see here. There's the uh, uh, models here. IO value models based on default values. And there's the back end Satoshi model. The one down here. And uh, what I do is I iterate through each of them, sets up. I set up some observer for each, uh, which will parse the inputs. It's done here, and handle some errors in some semi nice ways. And uh, yeah, it'll parse the input and always convert it into Satoshi type numbers. Uh, and the result will be set here. So this is very basic and of course when uh, this Satoshi model is set it has to flow back again to the IO models and uh, this is set up here by the observer for the Satoshi model this when this Satoshi model changes the various IO 
models should be updated and so I do this here in a loop and uh, I convert it the numbers into <coughs> correct the decimals and stuff so correct format yeah pretty pretty nifty pretty in, uh, at least I think so so yeah I did consider some other ways to deal with this instead of using rationalize basically decoupling the inputs from the output so there were no cycle so you can follow this if I type in the number here it will convert and it will do a parse here uh, but no rationalize and it will go down here and back up here but it will not feed back into itself since I've split this and this into two now before these were the same you can imagine uh, this is not the case in he here so um, this would also work but you'd get inaccurate results you you get your output will basically if you type in a, a number uh, like this in a field uh, this is you it will update itself into something which is not accurate oh, I can't actually do it I don't remember how many are there so I mean this will work but you will get the noise is, will end up visible here but it won't crash but, but you will see the noise from the uh, system ending up here always which is yeah it's, not so nice so yeah guys uh, rationalize is, is really useful when dealing with floating point numbers not sure uh, common lisp has rational numbers I've actually forgotten what the type uh, name for this is maybe I'm let's try this uh, maths let's see here math pi yeah, so it's a ratio, actually. My English is not my native language, as you probably can tell. Let's see, I'm just curious. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> so, yeah, that's it, I think. Uh, talk to you guys uh, later. Bye-bye.